Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a ridiculously huge book haul to show you. So stay tuned. Okay, so I have 41 different books to share with you today. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on each one, but I do wanna try to give you a little bit of information. So let's start with these right here. I got the Matched series by Allie Condal. I have Matched, Crossed, and Reached. And this is a dystopian love story. So, in the society where our main character, Cassian, lives, the society officials decide who you love, where you work, even when you will die. In the first book, Cassia is matched with her best friend, um, and she just knows that that is the person she's supposed to be with. However, um, right before the screen turns black, another image appears, another person. So, there's kind of a an interesting thing going on where it says she has to she's faced with impossible choices between Xander and Kai between the only life she's known and a path no one else has ever dared to follow between perfection and passion okay so that's this series next we have I got the happily ever after and the crown by Kira Cass these are from the selection series the selection is about, you have, I think, 25 different girls, and it's kind of like a dystopian bachelor part, you know, bachelor, where it gets narrowed down and narrowed down, and eventually he's down to just one, the one, and she's going to be the next princess. And this one, I believe... The first three ends with the one being chosen, and I believe this one is about their daughter, so the story continues. And I think Happily Ever After is the novellas from the original three. Then we have, by Victoria Aveyard, we have Cruel Crown, which is the I think, prequel novellas to the Red Queen series. And we have Red Queen... Glass Sword, and King's Cage. This is what it says about the Red Queen series. Mar borrows world divided by blood, those with red and those with silver. Mar and her family are lowly reds, destined to serve the silver elite whose supernatural abilities make them nearly gods. Mar steals what she can to help her family survive, but when her best friend is conscripted into the army, she gambles everything to win his freedom. A twist of fate leads her to the royal palace itself, where in front of the king and all his nobles, she discovers a power of her own, an ability she didn't know she had, except her blood is red. To hide this impossibility, the king forces her into the role of a lost silver princess and betroths her to one of his own sons. As Mare is drawn further into the silver world, she risks her new position to aid the Scarlet Guard, the leaders of a Red Rebellion. Her actions put into motion a deadly and violent dance, pitting prince against prince and mare against her own heart. From debut author Victoria Aveyard comes a lush, vivid fantasy series where royalty and desire can tear you apart and the only certainty is betrayal. And I thought this sounded amazing. I'm looking forward to these. Next, we have Passenger and Wayfarer by Alexandra Bracken. In one devastating night, violin prodigy Etta Spencer loses everything she knows and loves. Thrust into an unfamiliar world by a stranger with a dangerous agenda, Etta is certain of only one thing. She has traveled not just miles, but years from home, and she's inherited a legacy she knows nothing about from a family whose existence she's never heard of until now. Nicholas Carter is content with his life at sea, free from the Iron Woods, a powerful family in the colonies, and the servitude he's known at their hands. 
But with the arrival of an unusual passenger on his ship comes the insistent pull of the past that he can't escape and the family that won't let him go so easily. Now the Ironwoods are searching for a stolen object of untold value, one they believe only Etta, Nicholas's passenger, can find. In order to protect her, he must ensure she brings it back to them, whether she wants to or not. Together, Etta and Nicholas embark on a perilous journey across centuries and continents, piecing together clues left behind by the traveler, who will do anything to keep the object out of the Ironwoods' grasp. But as they get closer to the truth of their search and the deadly game the Ironwoods are playing, treacherous forces threaten to separate Etta, not only from Nicholas, but from her path home forever. And Wayfarer is the follow-up, the sequel, The Passenger. Next we have two books by Libba Bray. Oh, and just so you know, some of these books came from thrift books. If they have a sticker like this on the end, or like this, then um, they came from thrift books, which is... Uh, a website I love. It's thriftbooks.com. You can get a, great, a lot of great cheap used books. I also get books from Amazon, from the used bookstore that we have here called McKay's. I've gotten some from Books A Million. I get a lot of books from Book Outlet, but I do those in a separate haul because I always have a box of them. So, all right, back to this. So I have Two books here by Libba Bray. They both came from McKay's, and unfortunately I still have the stickers on the front. We have A Great and Terrible Beauty and Rebel Angels. And for A Great and Terrible Beauty, it says, Jimma Doyle isn't like other girls, girls with impeccable manners who speak when spoken to, who remember their station, and who will lie back and think of England when it's required of them. No, 16-year-old Jimma is an island unto herself, sent to the Spence Academy in London after tragedy strikes her family in India. Lonely, guilt-ridden, and prone to visions of the future that have an uncomfortable habit of coming true, Gemma finds a chilly reception. But she's not completely alone. She's been followed by a mysterious young man who warns her to close her mind against the visions. For it's at Spence that Gemma's power to attract the supernatural unfolds. There she becomes entangled with the school's most powerful girls and discovers her mother's connection to a shadowy group called the Order. It's there that her destiny awaits, if only she can believe in it. A Great and Terrible Beauty is a curl-up-under-the-covers kind of book, a vast canvas of rustling skirts and dancing shadows and things that go bump in the night. It's a vividly drawn portrait of the Victorian age when girls were groomed for lives as rich men's wives and the story of a girl who saw another way. Ooh, I like that. So when I got these books, I didn't realize they were part of a series. So I'm going to have to check and make sure that I'm not missing any in between these. So I'm only going to tell you about this one. <laughs> All right, next we have the Witch and Wizard series by James Patterson. We have Witch and Wizard, The Gift, and The Fire. It begins or ends like this. It's overwhelming. A city's worth of angry faces staring up at me like I'm a wicked criminal. The stadium is filled past capacity. Hundreds of thousands of curious, uncaring, or at least indifferent faces. And there are no moist eyes, much less tears. No words of protest, no stomping feet, no fists raised in solidarity. In fact, as the countdown ticker flashes onto the giant video screens, it looks it's looking to be my family's last day. I see my brother wit, wondering if there's some last minute way out of this. I see my mother crying quietly for wit and me. I see my father stooped with resignation, but smiling at me and my brother, trying to remind us that there's no point being miserable in our last moments on this planet. But I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a lot to cover before we get to the details of our public execution. Let's go back a bit. Dun, dun, dun. On the inside it says, your books, music, and art, banned. You are holding an urgent and vital narrative that reveals the forbidden truth about these perilous times. This is the astonishing testimonial of Witsy and Wit Allgood, a sister and brother who were torn from their family in the middle of the night, slammed into prison, and accused of being a witch and wizard. 
They are not alone in their terrifying predicament. Thousands of young people have been kidnapped. Some have been accused. Many others remain missing. Their fate is unknown, and the worst is feared for the ruling regimen that will stop at nothing to suppress life and liberty, music and books, art and magic, and the pursuit of being a normal teenager. Most copies of this story have already been seized, shredded, or burned. Read this rare surviving edition and pass it along with care before it's too late. Okay, this sounds really, 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 really freaking gay. I love it. Oh my gosh. Ah. Oh. Okay. I get a little carried away. And hello, who? Who's gonna say no? You can't have books. <laughs> no. <laughs> then we have. I have the first two books in the Blue Blood series by Melissa De La Cruz. We have Blue Bloods and Masquerade. And then I have one of the novellas from the Blue Blood series. It's Bloody Valentine. This says, Julia Van Allen has never fit in at Duchess, Duchess, I don't know how to say that, her prestigious New York City private school. She prefers baggy vintage clothes to the Prada and pearls worn by her classmates. But when she turns 15, Schuller's life changes dramatically. The death of a popular schoolmate hunt, haunts her in unexpected ways. And strangest of all, Jack Force, the most popular boy in school, is showing a sudden interest in her. Once an outcast, Schuller is thrust into Manhattan's most exclusive circle, social circle. Its members are the powerful, the wealthy, and as Schuller soon discovers, the unhuman. They are blue bloods, an ancient group of vampires, and for centuries they've been invincible. Now something is preying on this elite group, and Schuller wants to find out the truth. But is she the most vulnerable of them all? So I thought it sounded interesting. Plus, I got these so cheap. Oh my gosh. 25 cents, 75 cents, and 50 cents. If you watched my Come With Me to McKay's bookstore, that's where I got these. Next, we have The Face on the Milk Carton by Carolyn B. Cooney. And that just looks creepy to me. Because no one ever really paid close attention to the faces of the missing children on the milk cartons. But as Jane, Janie Johnson glanced at the face of the ordinary little girl with her hair in tight pigtails, wearing a dress with a narrow white collar, a three-year-old who had been kidnapped 12 years before from a shopping mall in New Jersey, she felt overcome with shock. She recognized that little girl. It was she. How could it possibly be true? Janie can't believe that her loving parents kidnapped her, but as she begins to piece things together, nothing makes sense. Something is terribly wrong. Are Mr. and Miss Johnson really her parents? And if not, who is Janie Johnson and what really happened? And apparently this is a series. There's also Whatever Happened to Janie, The Voice on the Radio, What Janie Found. And I swear I... I've seen the movie about this. I'm, I'm almost positive, but I'm still going to read it because, for one, this is a sh nice short book that sounds really interesting and would be great for my one of my readathons. Maybe not this month's readathon because I have other things planned, but definitely would go through this quickly. It's only like a hundred and something pages, so. All right, next we have The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. And I have heard so much from so many different booktubers about this. Okay, so it says, Every year, Blue Sergeant stands next to her clairvoyant mother as the soon-to-be dead walk past. Blue never sees them until this year when a boy emerges from the dark and speaks to her. His name is Gansey, and he's a rich student at... Aglionby, the, I don't know if I said that right, the local private school. Blue has a policy for staying away from Aglionby, sorry, Aglionby boys, known as Raven boys. They can only mean trouble, but Blue is drawn to Gansey in a way she can't entirely explain. She's on a quest that has encompassed three other Raven boys. Adam, the scholarship student who resents the privilege around him, 
Ronan, sorry, Ronan, the fierce soul whose emotions range from anger to despair, and Noah, the taciturn watcher who notices many things but says very little. For as long as she can remember, Blue has been warned that she will cause her true love to die. She doesn't believe in true love and never thought this would be a problem. But as her life becomes caught up in the strange and sinister world of the Raven Boys, she's not so sure anymore. From Maggie Stiefvater, the best-selling and acclaimed author of, author of the Shiver Trilogy and the Scorpio Races, comes a spellbinding new series where the inevitability of death and the nature of love lead to us to a place we've never been before. So many people have just absolutely loved this book, so I'm really excited to read it. Somebody left their bookmark in it. Okay, next we have Taking Chances, Hot Hollywood Nights, book one by M. Andrews, and Partners in Crime, a book three in the Gambling on Love series by M. Andrews. And these were little short erotic slash contemporary romance books that I got in my, my Guilty Pleasures book crate. These are just hot, steamy little short stories. So this one I got because, you know, Halloween, and I got it from Books A Million, and it's The Scary Stories Treasury. It says, three books to chill your bones, collected from folklore and retold by Alan Schwartz. And it's got three different books in here. We have Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, More Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, and Scary Stories 3, More Tales to Chill Your Bones. And so I thought, you know, perfect for Halloween time. And there's like really cool, creepy illustrations. Like, and you know, I, I need a good creepy book for Halloween. Plus I am doing a readathon um, on October 28th. And I think this would be a great one because it's Halloween weekend, so yeah. Okay, next I have Otherworld by Jason Segal or Siegel and Kristen Miller. And this is an advanced reader copy. I think it's supposed to come out either around Halloween, or it says here November. I won this at Barnes and Noble B Fest. They were having a trivia game and I came in first and I got this and another book I'll be showing you, another arc I'll be showing you. Um, but this book sounds amazing and I actually already had it in a shopping cart to buy. So I was super excited to get this. Plus, they are going to be at Y'all Fest and I'm going there in oh, like the second weekend of November to South Carolina. I'm so excited and I can't wait and I'm really looking forward to I'm seeing them speak there, which is going to be super awesome. So this is a very techy virtual world. Let me just, I've seen the trailer for this too and it looks really cool. Okay, it says, the company wel welcomes you to Otherworld, the new generation of gaming. There are no screens, there are no controls. You don't just see and hear it, you taste, smell, and touch it too. In this new reality, there are no laws to break or rules to obey. You can live your best life. Indulge every desire. Imagine a game so addictive you'll never want it to end until you realize that you're the one being played. Welcome to Otherworld. Step into the future. Leave your body behind. The frightening future that Jason Siegel and Kristen Miller have imagined is not far away. Otherworld asks the question we'll all, be, all soon be asking. If technology can deliver everything we want, how much are we willing to pay? And even before I got this, I had read a sampler, uh, like chapter from it. And ah, it was so good. And there's this, it's, they're just living pretty much in this whole virtual world. And it's gonna be really, really good. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna read this, probably during my readathon. I think I'm gonna to jump into this one, but I'm super excited about it. Now, if you watched my last readathon, that's when um, I went to the Barnes and Noble Bee Fest thing, and while I was there, I got to meet MJ Bosher, or Boshers, 
and she's the author of Fay Witch, and so I got her book, and she autographed it for me. Yay! I thought that was really awesome, and if you want to see that, go and watch my September readathon, and you'll see her talking about her book there. But it's a um, fantasy novel. It says, Sophie's seemingly ordinary life is about to be replaced with one full of chaos when she travels to an immortal land for, per for protection. She unlocks a deadly secret and discovers she is chosen to be their protector. She will have to protect her family, friends, and this new world she's come to love. She will sacrifice everything and never give up hope. She finds family, love, and power, but she also finds betrayal and murder. Will she rise to the challenge of what has been set before her or fall beneath the ashes of what she is destined to save? And, I mean, I like, I really, really like all the, the fae, and I'm a big fantasy fan, so I'm super excited about this book. <laughs> I think I'm super excited about all these books, otherwise I might not have purchased them. But, okay. Well, I was speaking of purchasing, I didn't actually purchase this one. Um, like other world, this was the other book that I got as a prize, and it's top ten by Katie Cotugno. I, I really don't know if I said that right. This is also an advanced reader copy, and it's supposed to come out in October. It says top ten things to know about top ten. Ten. The next pitch perfect romance from Katie Cotugno. Nine, a novel that deals with social anxiety from an author who has struggled with it. Eight, 99 Days was optioned for a TV series by Lila Feinberg. Seven, an LGBTQIA plus story with a bisexual girl protagonist. Six, tackles tough issues like concussions and class differences. Seven, Katie Catagno is the author of the popular books How to Love, 99 Days, and Fireworks. Four, a compelling non-liner narrative structure that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Three, a powerhouse author who is funny, charming, and real. Two, perfect for fans of Sarah Dessen, Jenny Han, and Morgan Matson. One, can a boy and girl really be best friends and not more? From the back, I couldn't really tell too much about it. I mean, I think I gather that there's a a bit of a love story with a bisexual girl and that's really all I can tell about it. So I'm probably just gonna go into it blind. I'll let you know what I think about it once I read it. All right, next we have Shadows of the Hidden by Anne Riley. And I just thought this was such a beautiful cover. And this is a book I got for 50 cents at McKay's, which I love that place. Okay. Caught in a centuries old battle for immortality, Nat Natalie Watson doesn't believe her parents are dead, even though they disappeared five years ago. Discovering the truth about their fate is one of the only things that gets her out of bed in the morning. But after moving from her home in Georgia to her aunt's boarding school in Maine, Solving the mystery of her parents' whereabouts is just one of several challenges she must face. When she's not fending off attacks from the popular kids, she puzzles over the rumors about a strange boy in her math class, one with fiery red hair who rarely speaks. Despite suspicions that he murdered his sister a year earlier, Natalie finds it impossible to stay away from Liam, Liam Abernathy, especially when he confesses to knowing something about her parents. Soon she's following him into the forest where things happen she doesn't understand. Things that shouldn't be possible. Interesting. Next we have The Au Pairs by Melissa De La Cruz. Three girls with three agendas and the ultimate destination, the Hamptons. Summer in the city, way overrated. Everybody who's anybody in New York City summers in the Hamptons. Mara, Eliza, and Jackie all want a piece of the action, all for different reasons. So the girls answer a classified ad to become au pairs. How bad can it be? Watching a couple of kids on the beach all day. They've got the swank address, the sweet ride, and an all-access pass to the hottest social scene on the East Coast. It's shaping up to be the summer of their lives. And this, 
I picked up again at McKay's. It was 75 cents, and I was just like, you know, this is going to be a nice fluffy read. So apparently somebody has written in a playlist. <laughs> this is interesting. Curious if those are songs mentioned in the book. But yeah, it was 75 cents. I thought it would be a good fill in the time kind of read. Next we have Touched by Kareem J Jackson. It's a Since Thieves novel. It says, time may not heal all wounds, but she can. You'd think being able to heal people with a touch would be a blessing, but to the 17-year-old Remy O'Malley, it's more like a curse. Every injury Remy heals becomes her own. She lives in fear of the day she's forced to mend a wound from which she can't recover. And she's desperate to keep her amazing ability a secret. Enter Asher Blackwell, a scarred 18-year-old with dangerous powers of his own. Asher seems to know more about Remy's abilities than she does, and maybe more than he's letting on. If she opens up to him, she might find out what it truly means to be a healer, but she'll also expose herself to, to capture by an old and very determined enemy. And if they catch her, they won't just injure her. They'll kill her. That sounds interesting. Next we have Cassandra Clare, Lord of Shadows. It's the next book in the Dark Artifice series, and oh my goodness, if you don't know Cassandra Clare, Mortal Instruments, Infernal Devices, you need to go and buy them. Oh gosh, how do I describe these books other than just amazing? They take you into this whole fantasy world of demons and demon hunters, and it's, oh, oh, I love Cassandra Clare so much. She is, like, my number one, and I'm actually, she's going to be at Y'all Fest. Oh, my God. I wanted to see her. As, she's supposed to be a keynote speaker, but I couldn't get tickets to see her because they were already sold out by the time I went and got my tickets. So, oh, I wanted to cry. But I still have every intention of trying to meet her because I love her. <laughs> okay, next we have a semi-definitive list of Worst Nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. And I picked this up at Books A Million the other day because I'm about to do Spookathon. And I was having a really hard time trying to find a book that had something to do with a childhood fear of mine. And all of them I had a hard time finding a book for. And this one, I'm sure, I'm sure that one of my childhood fears will be in here, positive. Because let me just read you what this thing says. It says, ever since Esther Soler's grandfather met death, her entire family has been cursed to suffer one great fear in their lifetime, a fear that will eventually lead each and every one of them to their graves. Take Esther's father, for instance. He's an agoraphobe who hasn't left the basement in six years. Then there's her twin brother, Eugene, whose fear of the dark goes far beyond things that go bump in the night. And her mother, Rosemary, is absolutely terrified of bad luck. As for Esther, she managed to escape the curse so far. She doesn't yet have a great fear because she avoids pretty much everything. Elevators, small spaces, crowds, anything that might trigger a phobia is off limits and is meticulously recorded in her semi-definitive list of worst nightmares. Okay, small spaces, I hate them. That, that's one of my fears, claustrophobic. Been claustrophobic ever since I was a kid. And yeah, I've been trapped in an elevator and that does not... It was really bad. It was really bad. Really bad. Okay. Esther thinks she has it all figured out until she's reunited with an old elementary school classmate and first crush, Jonah Smallwood. The encounter leaves her stranded at a bus stop and swindled out of her phone, all her cash, a fruit roll-up she'd been saving, and her list. 
not to mention her dignity. But the theft is also the beginning of an unexpected friendship between the two, one that sends the pair on an uproarious and powerful journey of self-discovery as they try to break the curse that consumed Esther's family. Together they face their greatest fears, one debilitating phobia at a time, only, disco only to discover the one fear they hadn't counted on, love. And I just, it, it sounds so cute too. Yeah, I just, I think it sounds super adorable. Figured, you know, it would definitely have one of my fears. My other fear is bugs. I hate bugs. Okay. Next we have Trap Jam by Stephen Barwin. Drinking line, it's all for the music. Olivia is living a double life. High school student by day, drummer by night. Her bandmates, Eddie and Lucas, think she's older and don't question her when she hangs out in clubs and drinks. When Lucas catches Olivia talking to her boy, talking to her friend Raymond in the women's washroom, he beats up Raymond in a jealous rage. With Raymond unconscious and seriously hurt, Lucas tells Olivia that Raymond's criminal brother is looking for them to, for payback. They go on the run, sleeping in borrowed van and stealing to get by. But is Lucas trying to keep Olivia safe or is he trapping her for himself? I, I think this is going to be like a super, super quick read to do like on a readathon or something. And I didn't even realize how short it is. It's like 189 pages. Now, and the writing is kind of large, but you have writing, you have writing that looks like this, but then you also have things that look like this. So it sounded like an interesting little book and a quick read, so I got that. And it was only a dollar at McKay's. Next, we have Daughter of Deep Silence. In the wake of the deadly devastation of the luxury yacht Persephone, just three souls remain to tell its story, and two of them are lying. Only Frances Mace, rescued from the ocean after torturous days adrift with her dying friend Libby, knows that the Persephone wasn't sunk by a rogue, rogue wave as survivors Senator Wells and his son Gray are claiming. It was attacked. To ensure her safety from the obviously dangerous and very powerful Wells family, Libby's father helps newly orphaned Frances assume Libby's identity. After years of careful plotting, she's ready to expose the truth and set her revenge plans into motion. Even if it means taking down the boy she'd once been in love with, Gray Wells himself. Sharp and incisive, Daughter of Deep Silence by Carrie Ryan is a deliciously smart revenge thriller that examines perceptions of identity, love, and the lengths to which one girl is willing to go when she thinks she has nothing to lose. And I really, really love that show, Revenge. And this very much reminds me of that. Next, we have Prom Nights from Hell by Stephanie Meyer, Kim Harrison, Meg Cabot, Lauren Miracle, and Michelle Jaffe. Five amazing authors, five unforgettable stories. In this exciting collection of paranormal tales, best-selling authors Stephanie Meyer, Kim Harrison, Meg Cabot, Lauren Miracle, and Michelle Jaffe take prom mishaps to a whole new level, a truly hellish level. Wardrobe malfunctions and two left feet don't hold a candle to discovering her date is the Grim Reaper, and he isn't here to tell you how hot you look. From angels fighting demons to a twisted take on getting what you wish for, these five stories will entertain better than any DJ in a bad tux can. No corsage or limo rental necessary. Just good, creepy fun. That sounded like a lot of fun. And it kind of reminded me of pretty much every single dance episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> and I love Buffy. I named one of my kids Sander. <laughs> okay, next we have Mad About the Hatter by Dakota Chase. And I, you know, I love retellings. And this is an Alice in Wonderland. So, yeah. All right, it says the trip down the rabbit hole will reveal a very different Wonderland. Alice's younger brother, Henry, is sent to a bizarre world he never really believed existed. His best chance to get home is the Mad Hatter, who is remarkably stranger, if more handsome fellow, than Henry expects. 
Hatter's only goal is to keep his head firmly attached to his body, and his best chance for doing it is to bring Boy Alice to the Red Queen as ordered. It's dislike at first sight for Henry and Hatter, but since circumstances forced them to remain together, they tried to abide each other. During their travels and adventures through Wonderland, they grudgingly forge a friendship that tests their values and establish beliefs. Learning to tolerate each other and then to compromise offers them a chance for something more when they reach the end of their journey, if they can survive the obstacles along the way. And oh my gosh, how cute is that? It's not really Alice in Wonderland, it's Alice's brother in Wonderland. Cute. The first time I read the back of that, I just saw the cover and bought it. <laughs> okay, next we have The Impossible Fairy Tale by Han Yuju. I probably said that wrong, and if so, I'm very sorry. And this is translated from the Korean by Janet Hong. Mia is a lucky girl. She is spoiled by her mother, gloats over exotic imported colored pencils, and won't be denied a coveted sweater. Then there is her grade school classmate, the child, who makes so little impression that she doesn't even merit a name. The children at their school have created a society marked by cruelty and soul-crushing hierarchies, where adults are invisible and the students seem consumed by an almost murderous rage. One day, the child sneaks into the classroom after hours and adds ominous sentences to her classmates' notebooks. This sinister but initially inconsequential act unlocks a series of events that end in terrible violence. Han Yujo's debut novel takes an eerie, unexpected turn when a teacher, who is also the book's author, wakes up from an intense dream. When she arrives at her next class, she suddenly realizes a student, the child, who knows everything about the events of the novel's first half. Suspenseful and unpredictable, the impossible fairy tale is a fresh and terrifying exploration of the ethics of art making and of the stinging consequences of neglect. Interesting. Okay, next we have Pieces by G. Benson. Orphan Carmen is 16, newly homeless, and will do almost anything to survive and keep her and her kid brother safe together and out of foster care. Ollie, also 16, has a life it's all about parents, school pressure, friends, and dreams of summer. The two follow, fall into each other's orbit, and one kiss changes everything. Ollie is captivated, but then Carmen vanishes. When they cross paths months later, everything is different. A young adult queer romance that looks at what we're prepared to sacrifice for those we care about. I just thought it was a really pretty cover. But it sounds like an interesting book. Several hours later, <laughs> now to continue. Okay, so the next book we have is 10 Things We Did and Probably Shouldn't Have by Sarah Milanowski. I believe it's two girls plus three guys plus one house minus parents equals 10 things April and her friends did that they Definitely, maybe, probably shouldn't have. If given the opportunity, what 16-year-old wouldn't jump at the chance to move in with a friend and live parent-free? Although, maybe opportunity isn't the right word, since April had to tell her dad a tiny little untruth to make it happen. See number one, lied to our parents. But she and her housemate, Vi, are totally responsible and able to take care of themselves. How they ended up skipping school, number three, Throwing a crazy party, number eight. Buying a hot tub, number four. And um, harboring a fugitive, number seven. It all is kind of a mystery to them. In this hilarious and bittersweet tale, Sarah Milanowski mines the heart and mind of a girl on her own for the first time. To get through the year, April will have to juggle a love triangle, learn to do her own laundry, and accept that her carefully constructed world just might be falling apart. One thing she shouldn't have done at a time. And this very much reminded me of my best friend and I back in high school. So there's a lot of things we did we probably shouldn't have. But we had a great time. 
So the next two books on my list are actually audiobooks. The first one is Beauty and the Beast by Jennifer Donnelly. And it's not exactly a retelling so much as it is filling in some information. So it starts out with the sisters, Love and Death, and they're wagering on whether Beast can change and fall in love and have someone fall in love with him. And Love believes, you know, love can conquer all. And Death is like, no. <laughs> And so they have this bet, and well, death likes to cheat. Death doesn't lose, or doesn't like to lose. So death puts this book, this enchanted book, into the library that Beast gives to Belle. And in this, in this book, Belle can have an escape and live these fantastic stories and adventures and you know, just be a retreat, but it turns out to be a little more than that, a little more than Belle has bargained for, and that's where the story comes in. Now, you know how the, you know, original Beauty and the Beast goes. This is just kind of a little slice of in-between. Okay, the next book is A Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina, and I have this in audiobook because during Spookathon, we are doing a buddy read. Um, it's Books and Lala and her best friends. And uh, so I'm going to read that for my thriller and for the buddy read. Um, and that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it wasn't too terribly long. And I hope you saw some books that you might like to check out. If you did like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget, sharing is caring. So you know somebody that might be interested in one of these books or just likes to watch videos about books, please share it. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, bye!